So, I would like to start with my uh, brief overview about the cryptocurrency regulation in Europe. Um, so, and uh, I will briefly give a, sh a short introduction about what are the cryptocurrencies and then provide a brief overview about the legal status in the European Union with respect to the uh, anti-money laundering regulations, the official status of cryptocurrencies and taxation policies in Europe, and come up with a um, uh, short uh, conclusion. So, uh, in the recent years, uh, digital technologies have uh, overthrown the existing economic patterns and changed the business environment to a significant degree. And it doesn't, however, solely imply that uh, ICTs boosted the economic gains or firms productivity, but one of the major merits of modern telecommunications is that they dropped the information exchange costs dramatically, which uh, on the one hand introduce opportunities uh, for the firms, irrespective of their size of location, but on the other hand, uh, they made um, everyday life solutions more available to the general public. And hardly any other sphere has experienced so much changes in terms of convenience, costs and security than electronic payments. The concern, however, remains uh, about a question how safe and stable the currencies would be in the future. Uh, one of the main issues here is that the role of uh, United States dollar in the last years uh, increased dramatically and it's even uh, strengthening, uh, strengthening uh, after the um, uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic and that prompt fears that dollar hegemony will last for forever while uh, other countries and while other currencies, other reserve currencies, and not even to mention uh, emerging market, uh, market currencies will stay with the grid. And so cryptocurrencies are treated here sometimes as a pain relief, but uh, not every country are united uh, on this position and so uh, in my review, I would like to focus uh, a bit more how um, different countries actually treat um, the cryptocurrencies and the scope of my research is the uh, entire Europe. So, uh, if we refer to the question, so what are the cryptocurrencies? There are a lot of uh, definitions and uh, the very basic is that the cryptocurrency represents a digital or a virtual currency that works in an exchange medium uh, on a peer-to-peer -peer exchange network and uses the principle of uh, cryptography. So, and uh, every cryptocurrency network has a preset of rules and it suggests that its participants are agreed on the legitimacy of transactions and balances within the system because if a sole node, if a sole actor disagrees on that, the system will finally collapse. So, uh, the crypto park currencies, like uh, everything in our world, they have their positive and negative um, uh, sides. As a pros, uh, one of the main pros is that contracts to the fiat currencies that are issued by the governments, the cryptocurrencies are usually generated in a decentralized manner. So, there is no central authority within the system who is influencing this process and um, all transactions and all coins, they remain purely transparent for all users. So double spending in, within the system is not allowed. As well, uh, here comes lower transaction fees we, if we compare those ones uh, to the traditional uh, financial institutions. However, economists say that um, uh, semi-anonymous status of tokens may favor some illegal activities uh, from um, uh, da from trading in darknet to terrorism and this problem should be somehow regulated uh, at a governmental level because uh, such kind of trans transactions are very difficult to trace. So in addition, um, many economists treat um, cryptocurrencies as a speculative bubble especially in the recent years and uh, some treats are also um, uh, thrown there with these uh, issues. 
Then if you look uh, at the legal status of cryptocurrencies in Europe, uh, there are actually two layers. So on the top level, there are um, so-called uh, anti-laundering, uh, anti-money laundering uh, directives that uh, are generally valid only for 27 uh, European countries. So for the 27 countries who are the members of the European Union. I must, uh, however, mention that uh, almost all other countries or are the member of the European community, they try to get very strict to this regulation. So they try to uh, adopt their own legislation to uh, the principles that are described uh, in these directives. So actually, uh, two last uh, directives, number four and number five, uh, could be addressed to the problem of cryptocurrencies. And one of the core principles of the fourth uh, AMLD uh, was to prohibit uh, terrorist financing and money laundering, which uh, somehow could be also addressed to the problem of cryptocurrencies. However, the overall scope of this directive was not so straightforward, uh, given that um, it couldn't be addressed uh, to the 100% to the cryptocurrencies, because the overall scheme that uh, was presented in this uh, directive does not cover uh, actually uh, this area. So there is no exact definition what the cryptocurrency is. So the fifth uh, AMLD that um, appeared in 2018 and actually ca came into effect on January 10th in this year, uh, overcome this problem by giving, a sh by giving a very exact definition what is the digital currency and it also obliged uh, authorities to monitor actors and their transactions and uh, in case report and file any kind of suspicion activities uh, for other countries. Uh, so the regulation, as I uh, told, will uh, have to come into effect uh, in early January of this year. But the problem is that uh, a very short time uh, come uh, um, from the appearance of this directive and uh, the vast majority of the countries is not ready to implement it to a full degree. So uh, it is told that the wide acceptance can take a couple of years more. When we refer now to the official status of uh, cryptocurrencies in Europe, uh, there, is act there is actually no unity between countries because countries have very different vision on uh, what is the cryptocurrency and how they treat them, uh, as well as they have a different uh, legislation system. So at least one point where countries are unite is uh, the idea that cryptocurrencies have to be considered as risky instruments. And almost all European countries have issued, uh, not only EU states, but European countries in general, have issued a note or an official document where they state that the crypto, every cryptocurrency uh, with respect of, of its origin or way of mining or whatsoever is considered as a risky instrument and the regulators are not responsible for any kind of risk and any kind of losses include also the reputational risks in case of handling with uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, also, in the vast majority of European countries, cryptocurrencies are not considered as a legal tender and the except, uh, with a sole exception for Belarus, Liechtenstein and Isle of Man. So the Belarus actually is uh, one of the first European countries that adopted uh, cryptocurrencies and allowed to exchange and use them freely. The Isle of Man is actually a tax bounty. It's uh, the overseas um, um, uh, jurisdiction of uh, United Kingdom and Liechtenstein, uh, they actually treat digital tokens uh, with the same functions uh, as financial instruments. So they are pretty much in the same uh, direction as Austria and Switzerland, but still they are a bit uh, further because uh, they assume that cryptocurrencies may take the function of uh, legal tender. And with uh, respect to official status, uh, just Lithuania uh, 
actually officially banned the use of cryptocurrencies in uh, uh, its own country, but um, in the vast majority of uh, European countries, cryptocurrencies are treated as commodities or intangible assets. This is mostly in um, Eastern European countries uh, like Bulgaria or Czech, uh, uh, Czech Republic, but also in uh, Austria. In the vast majority, it's treated as financial assets like in Germany, Norway, Slovakia and uh, Sweden. And also some countries don't have any specific legislation, but uh, for the initial corn offering like in Denmark, Finland, Netherlands or France. So uh, one more uh, interesting case is Moldova. Although the digital tokens are not regulated there completely in Transnistria, so this is the uncontrolled part uh, of uh, Moldova, coins are still legal. And uh, with respect to the taxation policy, as you can see from this uh, um, slide, there is also no unity. So nearly half of the European jurisdiction acknowledge taxation while working with tokens and in the majority of them uh, exchange operations like for usual currencies are not subject to the value added tax VAT. Uh, however, for example, in France, uh, all actions with uh, cryptocurrencies are subject to the VAT and surtaxes. Uh, some interesting cases uh, apply there as well. For example, in Finland, the general taxation also applies, but if uh, the company or person generates uh, any losses, they are not deductible. So in other countries, uh, this is the case. And one more interesting case is Croatia, which uh, does not have a very clear and straightforward uh, position uh, on applying the taxation towards cryptocurrencies. So they actually state it may be applied. And in some specific uh, countries, just a few uh, specific taxes may apply. For example, in Estonia, Portugal or Serbia, uh, it's the case uh, for the um, income tax. And for example, in uh, Montenegro, uh, they set a tax in case of real estate uh, transfer. And for example, in Netherlands, there is uh, um, a tax, uh, uh, there are assets and liabilities taxes that apply there. So if uh, we come uh, to a general conclusion and uh, we would like to summarize uh, the aforesaid, uh, we can say the following, that cryptocurrencies, uh, even though the European Union and Europe in general have done a lot of things so far in uh, regulating uh, them, there is uh, no clear concern how these tokens are actually treated with, uh, within the entire European Union and within the entire Europe. And while some countries are very in the forefront of tokens uh, legalization and do not impede their circulation and mining, we must confess that the vast majority of European countries remain uh, rather conservative and uh, actually even the full-fledged policy for Europe like the, the fifth uh, anti-money laundering directive uh, is already there. It takes some time to be applied throughout uh, the EU countries. So we may expect uh, some dramatic changes in the following years but to this point of time i can say that the vast majority of european countries still are in search of a right way how to treat cryptocurrencies how to use them and so on and so forth so at this point i would like to stop and uh, many thanks again to you and thanks for your attention if you have any questions please do not hesitate to ask